Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new $25 Android TV offered from Walmart known as the On 2K TV Stick. As I'm making this video, the only way I could get my hands on this was going in store to pick it up, but they do have like stock information on Walmart.com. I just couldn't get it shipped to me, and it's probably just a production problem. In the future, these will be available for shipping. This is definitely one of the cheaper Android TV sticks that I've seen on the market besides something like the Amazon Fire Stick, but uh, when it comes down to it, you know, that skin with the Fire OS. This is actually running true Android TV. And in this video, we're going to be testing out a bunch of stuff here just to see if it would be worth picking up for $25. But first things first, let's go ahead and get it out of the box. As you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. We have HDMI on one end and our power input. We also get a one amp, five volt power adapter, an HDMI extender, just in case this won't fit behind your TV or monitor. They've also included uh, AAA batteries for the remote itself. And the remote? Very Roku-esque if you ask me. I mean, not too bad. I've seen a lot of these. This does have voice search functionality built in, so there's a microphone on the remote. And we also get our micro USB to power the unit up. So yeah, there's not much going on here with the stick itself. We have HDMI on one end, and over here on this side we have micro USB N for power. Now I'm not exactly sure what kind of specs we have here, so the first thing I'm going to do is boot it up for the first time, I'll get it set up, and then we'll come back and check out the specs. I can install some applications to see what we got here. Now going into this, I was a little afraid it would be a reskin version of Android TV for the Walmart brand or the On brand, but lucky for us, it's actually real Android TV. It's actually a nice clean build, and upon setup, you can choose to install all of your favorite apps. We do have access to Google Play. And if you've ever used Android TV on any other device, you'll be right at home with this. It's not a reskinned version like I was afraid of. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. I do want to install some applications so we can see exactly what kind of specs we're working with here. After a little bit of investigation, I finally come up with these specs here, and it was kind of exactly what I thought it would be for a $25 Android stick. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S805Y. This is a quad-core Cortex A55 CPU running at 1.5 GHz. The GPU is the Mali 450, 1 GB of RAM, 5 GB of storage, built-in AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and it's running Android TV 9. It's a stock version of Android TV. So the specs are definitely not anything to write home about, but for 1080p playback, this should be just fine. But in this video, we're not just going to be testing 1080p playback. We're also going to be testing some gaming and emulation. All right, so here it is, and I gotta say it's a lot more snappier than I thought it would be given that we have that older S805Y CPU. The UI here is definitely snappy. It seems a lot more responsive than my Roku TV I have in the bedroom, but it's a bit of an older Roku TV. Now, even though they're calling this a 2K Android stick, I would definitely stick with 1080p with this chipset that we have here. And when it comes to 1080p playback, we do have Widevine support here, so Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Prime Video, all of that will do 1080p 60 right out of the box. We don't have to do any modifications or anything like that. So we will get HD content from all of our favorite streaming apps. Now, one thing that I really wanted to test was a little bit of 1080p 60 playback from YouTube. So let's head over there now. And this is a cold boot for this application. We'll see how fast it loads up. Not terribly bad at all. Like I mentioned, going into this, I thought it would be much slower. We'll get this loaded up here. Make sure we're at 1080p 60. Just give you a look here. This is as high as we can go on this monitor. And overall, 1080p 60 playback is going to be perfectly fine on this little stick. And like I mentioned, we do have that HD version of Netflix up to 1080p on this device here. Unfortunately, there's really nothing that I can show you here that won't be uh, flagged by the content ID on YouTube, so we'll just leave it at that. So this was definitely designed for media playback in mind, and if you need something for 1080p, this will work out, but let's go ahead and test out some games. Now, we don't have a lot of power here, given that we have that older chip, but we should be able to run some easier-to-run Android games, and hopefully does a decent job at emulation. So first up, we have Real Racing 3. This has been on the market for a little while, and it's very well optimized for lower-end chipsets. This is pretty playable, and by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller. It could be better, and the S905 definitely does run this a lot better than the S805 that we have in this unit. 
but uh, as you can see, it is working. Next on the list, we have Crossy Road. This is just one of those that's always up on the App Store on the front page, and I figured I'd go ahead and download it. This does work with the included remote, so you don't have to connect a controller to this unit. And yeah, I mean, for the easier to run native Android TV games that are on the market, this will be just fine, whether you're using a controller or the remote itself. But now I want to see how this thing handles emulation, and since we don't have a lot of storage on the stick, I kind of wanted to add some external storage using an OTG adapter, but unfortunately, the ones I have do not work with the on-stick, so I'm not sure if it is disabled in the operating system on the stick itself, or these adapters aren't compatible, but they do work with other devices that I have in the house, so there is a good chance that OTG isn't working on this stick. So first on the list, we have some Sega Genesis, otherwise known as Mega Drive in other parts of the world. I'm using RetroArch with a Pico Core. I'm using a Bluetooth Xbox One controller, and in native Android games, it's working just fine. I don't have any lag. But when it comes to RetroArch, I'm having a lot of issues with lag and button inputs just not registering. I kind of get stuck to the left. So let's move over to a standalone emulator and see if we can fix it. Here we have Moopin64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store running Diddy Kong Racing. And performance is actually pretty good. We're at 30 FPS, but uh, as you can see, it's not registering my inputs. This is really odd because in native Android games, it was working just fine. So this is unplayable, not due to the performance, but our input is really, really messed up over Bluetooth. And the final one I wanted to test here was PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. As you can see, we're getting the same issue here. So uh, emulation is kind of a no-go right now. Uh, hopefully they can update this and fix it down the road, but the way it is right now, it's just not any good because of that input. But I mean, this here is Family Guy. It's an easier to run game. We are running it at full speed. We just really can't play it. So in the end, when it comes down to it, I would probably pass on this. Even at $25, I've run into those issues with the Bluetooth controllers. Now, if you really, really need something this cheap for 1080p playback, be it Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu, then this little stick would probably get you by. But most of the time nowadays, when we buy a TV, it's either got Roku built in, Amazon Fire, or it's an Android TV TV. I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to do with this little stick, but it kind of seems like this should have been released about three years ago. So it's really hard for me to recommend this. Now, On does have another Android TV box coming to the market. I think uh, it was released in a few stores, not my local store, but as soon as I can get my hands on one, we will test it out. It's got more storage, more RAM, and it's running a higher-end CPU. And I think it's only 5 to $10 more than the stick version. But yeah, with this one here, I would definitely pass on it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I was hoping for a little better performance out of this cheaper Android TV. But unfortunately, you kind of get what you pay for. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.